The real deals are on the air now. And now, live from the Swords of St. Michael Studios, it's The Real Deals, Kenneth at Bear Rose Deal. Hey, folks. What do you know? Oh, there's a magical chat. Yeah, there's uh, some maintenance going on on the network. Welcome uh, to The Real Deals, okay? <laughs> here we are. Now Ken can give you the 10-minute explanation why we're late. No, that's not professional. Thank we're you. I didn't think it was that necessary. Tonight, kids, we're going to get into it. Fault. Yeah. And we shouldn't even pay attention to it, okay? It mm -hmm. doesn't exist. What do we tell people all the time? Oh, it's a bump in the night. Look the other way. Mm -hmm. It's not happening to you. Oh, yeah, it's real slow out there. So if you can't connect the chat. Yes, everything's there. slow tonight, kids. Just, you know, <laughs> hang on. Grab your cat. Have a kitty cat snack instead of cheese. I don't know. It's you one of those nights. Remember, this, you know, YouTube is the professionals. These These guys are... They're just into data mining and stealing your Nothing identity. wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> So let's have fun and help them do some data mining while we say... St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the malice and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. And we humbly pray and do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine powers of God. Cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who roam to the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart Jesus, Amen. have mercy on us all. Amen. Father, Amen. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, there's that thing again. What? <laughs> Sticking bars everywhere. What are you doing? So I'm gonna have to get that thing out of here. Oh my gosh, we're just gonna yeah, have that's to. Because that's we're the gonna chat have to because pull the, out the blaster tonight. Well, this, this could be more fun. Okay, let's see if it pops up again without being asked to pop up. Yes, welcome to our show. We're gonna get through a real quick, wonderful, fun hour of Ken's favorite topic. <laughs> well, that's people. my favorite topic. And well, it's especially it one of your favorite topics: telling yeah. people what not to do. Another one. Don't step in. Hey, I want to start with a Don't step in kind it. of a commentary. So I was reading over the things about the Dybbuk box, the thing that we put up in 2015. Okay. We saw the movie, and we uh, we saw the haunting episode, and mm -hmm. the guy bought it on eBay. It's yes. the person who thinks they didn't buy it at an auction. eBay is an auction site. Yes, totally okay, auction you think you put site, it on, kids. Buy it now. They're hoping to get it driven up like oh, that yeah. piece of toast that had the Blessed Mother in it. I know, right? Uh-huh. Or uh, the latest fake relic from uh, Bishop Naparsky, the fake bishop over there in Germany. Oh, my gosh. There's so many people <laughs> selling fake relics. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's getting bad. But the uh, comment I mainly wanted to make was when we make references to movies, we're talking about in compare to real life. You know, we're not giving the details. I could care less, you know, where the guy was from, what color his hair was. The Ferris said that he was a doctor, and it turns out he was a nurse. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Of course, that those things I'm just throwing out there. But, you know, don't. Don't let this stuff get you. What we're trying to do when we do things like we're talking about the Dybbuk box, where we're making an, an example of, you know, the uh, the phenomenon or whatever you may call it. And I think the argument was, you know, people are going like, oh, you didn't say, uh, you know. okay, you know, of course we're not going to say it. Okay, plain and simple, the Dybbuk box. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's an attachment. You cannot bind a spirit to the box like you're, it's no. in a cage and it can't do anything. Exactly. And if you make deals with devils through appeasement and something, you had to give something to have it. And it's just going to give you the illusion it's in the cage. Like, you still in the cage there, demon? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the cage. Or right something. There. And he's looking at his watch because he's got <laughs> someone else to torment next. It's a, and we called it cur uh, curses on cursed objects and all that. So yes. it's, it's, what's the big deal? So you have a guy over there on the East Coast who does Satanism in his house, and he charges yeah. people to go through it. Because that's what they do, darling. Yeah, that's so you do. curse an object, and then you suddenly want to float it around like it's something special, and you know, and everybody's reading the facts about the Dybbuk yeah. box. Oh, you're wrong. Oh, the prayer that was said was actually one of the Liturgy of the Hours prayers, blah, 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 blah. We never said anything about any of that <laughs> stuff. Get over it. If a Dybbuk box could happen, it would be easy because any you know any f old fool witch or whatever can put a curse on something and get a demonic spirit to attach to it. That just means you've given it to it. You say, hey, you can hang here if you want. Here's another flat for sure. you. It doesn't mean you're trapped here forever and you can do only my bidding and nobody else can have you. Ha, ha, ha. All right. <laughs> Are you done with your soapbox, love? Pass it on over and I'll step on mine. <laughs> anyway, kitties, head us in. You got fingers. We're having delays tonight, but please, if you want, post your little questions. I will try to get them up as soon as possible. Thank you all for joining us. Remember, please like, 
share our video. You don't have to give me a heart if you don't want to, but I'd love a thumbs up. So, on with the show tonight. We're going to talk about 10 yeah. or 12 top mistakes, or no, however many Ken wants again. to go no. on. You're right. I know it's always 12. On the top, hi I Athena, said, the hi Denise, hi Michael, hi David, hi Zuma, Emma's in again tonight, oh, everybody's Kimberly, in. yes, good to yeah, see you all good. tonight, yeah. I hope everybody had a wonderful 4th of July and not too many bang bangs or smell smells that bothered you folks, but, <laughs> you know, the bugs are going to bite no matter what we do. We go, might go, pop go. in next week and do a midday uh yeah, we're Short trying show. to figure out how to do this like little lunch bunch a with the real deals, lunch. you know, and kind of have some fun with it and positive yeah. vibes stuff. Number yeah. one, Ken. Oh, wait. Let's re remember the true goals is just a thing. The true goals of oh. this work is deliverance and helping people. True. And these all really are undermining that. So, okay, number one, Farah. Is trying to have a oh, person. Oh, please. To You're going to make each. me read it after I just messed it up before the show. What's wrong with you? Oh, that's right. <laughs> the number one thing that he has on his list, kitties, of the top mistakes done by teams, paranormal teams, deliverance teams, immunology teams, is trying to have one of each. Now, if you go and pick eggs. Mm -hmm. from underneath chickens fannies in a little laying house chances are you're not exactly going to be able to figure out which one's laying a blue egg a yellow egg a white egg or a speckled egg here you have an option that's why i wrote the book haunted investigations kids you have an option okay ken why don't you want one of everything why don't you want to try one of everything Sounds like my idea of a good chocolatier. I'd like to try one of everything there. Okay, you lost me. And probably everybody on the planet. Talking about eggs and chocolate? Yeah, it's like, where did that analogy come from? <laughs> okay, the analogy is, okay, you can choose what you eat, you can choose what you pick, <laughs> but when you're talking about deliverance and walking into people's homes and putting together teams to help yeah. people, you don't want, let's say, um, Shamu the whale, mm. a unicorn, well uh, aardvark and a rhinoceros. Why not the rhinoceros? Well, the rhinoceros <laughs> is a little They're rather peaceful pokey. and so you drive a jeep. They're cute, but people, <laughs> kill them, people kill them for those cute little things. Yes, exactly, Michael. Blue eggs. There are natural blue eggs, I swear. Yeah, blue eggs out of the... Mm -hmm. uh, when you crack them open? Yes. So, yeah, and you know, and, and this is it's, uh, some, some teams and um, they do this kind of like it's a uh, political correct thing thing you know it's like I, I mean there's one team I uh, uh, there was a I think it's beyond case. political correctness I think it's like everybody just wants to be like okay everybody's welcome everybody and which I agree everybody's welcome mm -hmm. to the after party okay yeah you only need one person to yeah. deal with I mean do you really have to get you know going to run and get a rabbi you know it's like mm -hmm. a it's next barroom joke you know or even have you know on the one this one team I, I was familiar with in the early uh, 2000 mm -hmm. they had a, a you know a baptist and then they had me yep. and in one case it came in handy because the gal wouldn't let a catholic walk in her house <laughs> so he did and then reported to me with the information cuz she used to be catholic and yep. you know she was she had her house uh, um with infestation, with disembodied <laughs> voices and all nine yards. Yeah. But it's it's a waste of time to try to find people. And then you're going to find people who are self-proclaimed. You know, like this uh, gal who was on Paranormal State, you know. And just because, you know, you s proclaim to be a witch doesn't make you an occult expert, for example. Just because you're Catholic doesn't mean you're a demonologist by default. I mean, True. we have arguments with moronic Catholics out there all the time. <laughs> they don't know their catechism. Let's not call them morons, all right? <laughs> I don't think our bishop will like that. <laughs> I can even not, tell you right where to go and bump nice. heads with them. Um, one or more places. So, and, uh, I don't know, what else can you add to that so we don't want to beat it to death? We're going to keep going to the Nothing. list. I already confused everybody with blue eggs and aardvarks. <laughs> <laughs> so my analogies are earthy. <laughs> blue eggs and aardvarks. I mean, just in case there's an aardvark family that that needs it. No, chocolate. <laughs> Oh, boy. Number two, trusting in self-proclaimed exorcist demonologist. This can go true for anybody. It's like I What's said. What's a self-proclaimed exorcist? That's somebody who just goes to... They, they, uh, you go to these organizations, American Association of Exorcists, or, which is not the the one from uh, the Vatican. That one's the International Association of Exorcists, or IAE. 
uh, that they'll they'll wrap themselves in these. They're really kind of like like it's a class or it's a college or it's an institution. They'll use like Saint Benedict medal, yeah. you know, a nice little, and they use the Saint Saint Michael thing like crazy now. So, and we were there before them. So, but the uh, for the logo, <laughs> anybody screwing that around? So. <laughs> Yeah, we know how people are with a demonologist title because if you look it up, it says that anything with the word just on the end of it just says one who studies. Even if you look up mineralgist, oh, I study minerals. Oh, okay. Do I have any minerals in my cup of water right now? You know, when I turn on the faucet, is there any minerals in the one I drew from the river before I boil it? <laughs> I don't know. But this is a this is a problem because people don't check it out. You know, like I said, you know, call us, contact us, and see if you got you know the next run fail. You know, so we can tell you to, hey, go away. Your postman has more authority over demons than he does. So anything to add, Miss Farah? Mm, I can't think of one thing. I can probably think of a hundred things, but not one. <laughs> How about a hundred things really fast? Well, you know, what you did is you just pointed out the trust factor. And um, a lot of people, unfortunately, kids, when they haven't had any measure of faith imparted to them in their youth, or in growing up and then they they want to help out and they want to do this in their Christian denomination or non-denomination there isn't there isn't a strong body of trust to begin with yeah and without a trust and a full knowledge of what your faith is and what your faith practices are uh, it's easy to trust the wrong people yeah, and, you know, somebody just mentioned a name that we're all very familiar with, and I'm not going to say live on the air, because I don't like giving people credit where no credit is due in, in the sense that I think mm -hmm. that a lot of people will get into deliverance and their heart might be in the right place because they really want to help people. Unfortunately, the biggest problem we can, we can have is that we want to do it our way, and if a group... Let's say I joined the Baptist wants to do it this way, and I don't like that, and it's, so mm -hmm. I disagree, but I can find out, well, I can jo join the Methodist, and the Methodist will let me do it my way. I'll leave the Baptist and that authority, and I'll go join the Methodist, because I like what they have to say. So in that sense, when you are trusting people that have been through a number of denominations or a number of excuses so that they become trustworthy, this is this is a red flag people mm -hmm. when you hear people that are trying to help other people and they say well I was this and I was that and you know or or I'm just I'm just doing my own thing hmm. oh yeah that's so I'm true. under no authority whatsoever I'm under no ecclesiastical standing but I'm just doing my own thing now hey you know that that might work but when Satan takes people out to the back of the woodshed Mm -hmm. He doesn't uh, pick out one, two, three, or four. Everybody gets the same score, kids. Then we got a Everybody report from one it. guy, call himself an exorcist, who's in that same order we were talking about earlier. And he, what he's doing is he's getting gals to uh, break up with their husbands, and he's hitting on them. Yep. So this is why you can't trust those, and you want someone you can trust. It's like, is that a man of the cloth? You know, it's like they're not acting, and he's got nobody to answer to. So no. it's like, what's he going to do? Answer to Everybody wants to call himself bishop or archbishop. And authority is everything. <laughs> So, like, they're the authority, so they answer Whether to you like authority or not has nothing to do with it. Whether the person is willing to come under the authority of a figure that is going to be a spiritual mentor and help these people, that's everything. So yeah. that's, that's, a big, that's a big thing, kids. Number two is trust. And yeah. when people come on board and into any team and say, well, you know, I trust so-and-so because they helped out so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so, and it's like, hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you find out six months, a year later, that things are worse. Was the trust misplaced? Did the people go back? Only the people that actually were there and did the initial intake and followed the people through the deliverance will know. Yeah. But chances are there was misplaced trust in someone that probably misplaced their faith in the wrong place and wasn't coming from a place of faith. Not that I can judge people's places of faith. Just be very careful who you put your trust in. Amen. Yeah, that's a big one. And uh, you want to read number three? or you? Well, it looks like one popped out of place there, didn't it? Uh-oh. 
Uh-oh, one popped out of place. Well, number three was um, see. having been a victim. Doesn't qualify one to be a demonologist, a team leader, a um, haunted investigator, um, a charismatic team leader. It, 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 let's just say you were possessed or you were a victim of this stuff, and then all of a sudden, three months later, you believe you have a calling, and you've contacted the team, and you've contacted priests and, and pastors, and you, you're, you're hearing these spiritual voices, and, and you're talking to St. Michael, and this and that. Well, that's nice. That doesn't mean that you're ready mm-hmm. or called. Only your spiritual director can determine that, and that's going to take months, if not years, to make sure that you're free and clear mm-hmm. of what you originally attracted. Yeah. And that's not going to happen overnight. And putting that that's basically going right from the fire right back into the frying pan. It's like, hmm, you have to completely heal the singe, develop a tough skin, and you don't go in alone ever. So in other words, you have I've just I've never seen anybody do it. Never. Yeah, last week's show never. was kind of a preliminary so that you know what you're getting into and you actually decided to go and but that's just kind of like the secondary warning. Oh, boy. Yeah. And been a, been, having been a victim is like, we don't mean like, you know, something non-spiritual warfare. Whenever you are too particularly uh, mm-hmm. a target at one point or another of, of you know, devils or whatever. And you uh, were believed or were, had been uh, oppressed <laughs> or possessed or lived in an infestation. Exactly. You're particularly more vulnerable. And you're probably, you may not even be already free. Most people aren't. And... They're dealing with it on some level, so they're not ready for prime time because they're actually bringing that spirit into the house as they go. Basically, in. and they're influenced by it, and they might go. They might have to take long breaks, go into depression or whatever, that kind of thing. Well, it's and, too, so, yeah. and think about it. There are a number of people that we worked with over the years that truly have had bad situations happen that weren't completely possessed, but they were mm-hmm. mildly oppressed. And through a period of healing, they've come to a spiritual place where they join prayer teams or they speak with their pastor about discerning a calling in helping with deliverance and spiritual warfare. And a demonologist, as far as an experienced demonologist, not a book demonologist, all right? We've uh, interviewed... uh, Dr. Bradshaw. He's the only demonologist that we know in the world with a PhD that actually has the book knowledge of demonology. And he was sent to England to get this. So when Rose Ellis asks me about a three hour course on demonology, I can talk for three hours about pencils. Does that <laughs> no- mean that, you know, I'm a pencil expert? How to create them, make them, fill them with lead, etc.? No. Yeah. Um, a three-hour course on demonology. Hmm. Yeah, we spoke I suppose, three hours I suppose that that's, uh, that's basically a sensation. Let's try this. Let's do this. It's to get everybody's senses riled up thinking, hmm, I can call myself a demonologist. Yeah. That's, that's pretty dangerous. And that's, I'd say, uh, shall I say, uh, irresponsible? That's a target. Is that a nice way to say it? It's freaking irresponsible. Yeah. Stupid? Can I say that word? Yeah. That's I know, it's not very nice. This is a companion show, so people who missed the last I apologize, show but that's, this, no, that's just, uh, no, that's not after. good. And, you know, we've also had people say, oh, well, I've been talking to Michael since I was a little child, and then, you know, I hear this, and I hear that, and I hear those voices, mm-hmm. and, you know, I was just, I was oppressed for a little bit, and, you know, now I'm fine, and, and the voices are clear, and, okay, so what is your spiritual director? say mm-hmm. well you know i got a pastor and this and that but you know i really don't need a spiritual director because you know i've got i've got the angels talking okay and say michael of all what like makes he's, you he's think their personal gardening angel that that's actually who you're talking to and how are you going to discern that voice from the devil being the father of all lies mm-hmm. the person that you're helping some of their little pack roaches follow you home and start talking to you Using mm-hmm. Michael's image, how are you gonna tell the difference? Yeah, in that little short even time span some of the most uh, the most faithful holy saints had difficulty telling the difference. So how are we? How are we gonna tell the difference, kids? 
It's anyway, going to be a good topic for another show. That, uh, yeah, that I think we're going to talk about like the modern mystic seers and to help them to discern, because people have gone from being a witch to supposedly a deliverance yeah. minister in the Catholic Church of all places. Yes. And After then they had voices and all that stuff. People. Spirits telling them stuff. And then What's now they think it's St. Michael. So, like, suddenly you're holy enough to receive revelations from St. Michael. Exactly. Um, just because you change, changing and getting converted, you're like somewhere below par zero still because, you know, you haven't really cleaned yourself up entirely. You're not really at par zero where the average guy is when they go to church on Sunday. Or girl, you know. Russell Irby said it's always St. Michael. Oh yeah, I'm talking uh, to St. Yeah. Michael. I'm I'm hearing from St. Michael. St. Michael's handing me his sword. St. Michael's anointing me. Mm, yeah, I got the anointing here. I got I got a bottle of olive oil. For you. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't a whole bottle. Oh, Father Jamie's in the house. Hey, Father Jamie. In his new house, right? The caboose house, Father. <laughs> Oh, goodness oh, gracious. So be one. very, very careful, people. You know, if you've had experience with something, you know, God bless you for getting yourself help, yeah. for getting yourself prayed up, and for getting yourself on the right path back to some semblance of peace with a regular prayer life, a regular spiritual director, and figuring out, wow, God let me experience this. What am I supposed to do with it? Of course, you're supposed to take your experience and help yeah, somebody. But does yeah, that mean that point. you're meant to be on a team mm -hmm. or a deliverance team or you're called to be a demon? Mm, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. There are so, and Ken and I were just talking about this the other day, too. There's so many areas. People need prayer warriors. The All churches have prayer groups. They have, um, you know, specific groups that get together. They have, they take care of shut-ins, the sick, the elderly, children. More than ever, our churches need people that have faith-filled lives that will take care of children. Children are being demonized, molested, oppressed, and thrown away at greater numbers than any time in history. Are they being indoctrinated, kids? So it's like if you've been if you've been given a situation that's freaked you out. What makes you think that you can't help these children out, whether they're 5 or they're 15? That's why it's important to get a spiritual director or speak to a pastor that's a great level of holiness that can help you and say, okay, I think that you need to write this down, and then we look at it in a week, we look at it in a month, and God's saying, hmm, ask yourself this. What, what is God showing you in this list that you're collecting? So let's not make assumptions and, you know, jump over the wall like Humpty Dumpty did and break <coughs> our little crackled eggshell. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah, Take your time hard to find and pray a about it. Director too, a good one. And, and we're not pointing fingers at anybody. We're not calling anybody out for doing this. Mm -hmm. We're saying that it, the devil doesn't just knock once and go away. That one brings it to the the second one, which yes. is kind of a continuum. That's victims mm -hmm. move too clo uh, too quick from patient to doctor status. So that's. I don't know, an extension a little bit. I just not really can elaborate much on that more. But that's when it happens. The time span between A and B is way too fast. It's not like several years or an appropriate time. Well, you got a spiritual director. You just go ask the first priest to come along or uh, whoever, you know, the leader of the charismatic group at the mm -hmm. church or whatever. The, it could be uh, it, it wasn't you went and prayed. God's got to exactly. find them for you. You know, because we know that everybody's not cut out to, to be a spiritual director who's a priest even. No. By default. It's, I mean, it's there was, very difficult. They're a spiritual advisor by default, but, you know, the director thing, that's like the Sears and Faustina had a lot of trouble, Sister Faustina, now St. Faustina. She she wrote about it in her diaries, how much trouble she had. She had her confessor. Yes, exactly. Call her father confessor. And that's that's one of the biggest things that this work is. It's a lot of prayer. It's a lot of prayer. It's a lot of trust. Yeah. The man upstairs and his son, his mother and father, they're all watching over us. So onward and upward, let's get to, no. let's see, um, I think we just covered four. Yeah. You know, four. basically victims moving too quickly to do the work and being a patient. Now they want to be the feather duster. Yeah, not good. <laughs> okay. Okay, no five then. And five in trying mm -hmm. to be, what is it? The cones are shrinking, people. <laughs> okay, in trying to be diverse in all religions and faiths. So, well, isn't that like number mm -hmm. one all over again? Trying to be diverse in all faiths and religions. It is in a certain sense, but it's backwards. In a sense, now, okay. Instead of a team trying to have somebody. Go ahead, take it away, honey. 
for each faith, now it's one person trying to play all hats. Like like I said, Benny from uh, the, the movie The Money, uh, Mummy, Money, <laughs> with Brandon Fraser, and he goes up there and he holds up a Jewish star, David, and he starts speaking in a, you know in Hebrew, uh, and then he holds up a Christian cross at some point, and and then he says, you know, you don't have any faith, that kind of thing. You can't go in there and you can't pretend no. like you know that you're just going to pull it up and then just because you're reading from it doesn't work that way. And we saw that with the sons of Skavar, oh, right? Oh, so true. That's so true. So it's biblical, and it's uh, so it's uh, not just a track record that we've seen. You know, the fools trying to play that. Oh, I can be Christian and you know, and a pagan exactly. at the same time. No, no. Look or what I can to do this, and I can do that, yeah. and it's just not going to matter. No, 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 no. Yeah. So that's that's a sad. It really, really is. And it's hard because a lot of times it's very, very difficult to judge ourselves. It's, you know, Ken and I don't even dare try to judge ourselves and where we're at. We're just, you know, humble little warriors just (laughs) trying to carry on one foot in front of the other kids. We don't, uh, we can't claim anything other than God loves us. Period. I guess that's kind of self-explanatory and some of these others kind of go into it. Yes. Okay. So number six, uh, trying to what? Trying to become an occult expert. As in? And we spoke about it earlier in a brief instance. Um, mm. That if you're on the team and, you you know, a person wants to be the go-to guy, hey, do you recognize this symbol? Pulling the sheet up or what's reminiscent of grave, or, or what's reminiscent of dirt on, on in the floor of the house and the upstairs in the living room? <laughs> Graveyard dirt? You know. But no, and the problem is, it's just like, is there one book or one area, and then it, will it be healthy? Mm. There, there's one. There's one repercussion people don't think about. Yes. And I can give this story. I was in uh, the '90s. I was reading uh, notes from a Lutheran pastor because you know the uh, yeah they were discussing the problem with Satanism. And uh, when I was a, uh, you know, it's like you get kind of creeped out. So he was actually quoting parts of the satanic bible from anton LaVey. it's not as heavy as the some of the mm-hmm. uh, we'll say the less mainstream stuff that gets more yes. of the nitty-gritty of child sacrifice mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff and uh so uh when i read it went to sleep woke up guess what was there a uh, hooded specter with red eyes so and i was like Sounds where did i hear about this before so rolling stone magazine had an interview with tommy iami from black sabbath Talking about where the name Black Sabbath came from. Tommy Iommi brought a, a book of Satanism home. And it oh, was Anton nice. LaVey's book, by the way. And uh, it was the drummer's Another brother. Lefay I think followers? they changed drummers later on. I don't know. It's not important. but uh, So he took it home. He read it before he went to bed. He went to sleep and he woke up with sleep paralysis with this hooded, hooded specter with the red eyes, which is like an agent. It's like the progressive gal who shows up everywhere mm-hmm. if someone needs insurance. And <laughs> so, the, so that inspired him. This is before the band was anything. That inspired them to write the song called "Black Sabbath." So it's not like about black mass or anything. It's because it happened on Sunday, and it's about the story. If you read the words uh, about this encounter that he had with it, but the the, the short um, you know tip on that is um, yeah that the. Um, just reading these topics are going to cause a, an invitation. You might be too haunted before you're even done your, with your studies, and then you're going to go back and you're going to be like with the parapsychology. You're going to find that, have, do I really have any use for this stuff anymore? Yeah. I just confer with other demonologists if I think, hey, what do you think? You think that sounds like, you know, uh, ritual abuse from the, you know, uh, or is that voodoo, you know? Like there's a black snake, you know, the person's seeing, and then you find out that they have voodoo in their family. I mean, some of the stuff is kind of self-explanatory, you know. Is that one kind of a long, uh, you know, does it require any more? Uh, what would you like to add to that? Well, I want to attack it from the perspective of the prayer warrior and the person that is coming from a place of God. Mm-hmm. If you're in this, according to my haunted investigation, for the right reason, you want to help people, and you want to get them out of that dark space, and you want to get them something light, peaceful you know you want to help them change their environment change their life and get them on a path where they're starting to pray and they're starting to feel good about themselves mm-hmm. if they have any if you walk into any place it doesn't matter if it's a place of business 
it's a home, it's an investigation, and if you have a prayer life with God, one of my favorite priests, God rest his soul, who's now in heaven, that I loved reading his inspirational blogs, Father uh, Charles Okeke, mm -hmm. in one of his many homilies, he spoke often about how evil has a stench. It has a stench. It has an odor. It has a viscous nature that sucks the life out of places and things. And the closer you get to God on your walk with Jesus, okay? You're going to walk into places and you're going to be like, Ugh. you're going to feel like you just like licked an ashtray. You're going Ugh. to <laughs> look at a bookshelf and you're going to go like, Ugh, I don't want to look at that. You're going to be repulsed by evil. So what do you need to read? Five books about the Keys of Solomon, uh, the Knowledge of Crawley. What do you need to read all these books for? That's called Invitational Curiosity. And what they say about curiosity killing the cat, it's not going to kill the cat here. It's going to singe the cat nude. So what you're going to do is you're going to invest in a prayer life not books. Mm -hmm. Unless your spiritual director specifically says, here, there's a book on, let's see, um, past occult practices according to the saints or something like that. Unless your spiritual director says, you know, why don't you pick this up and t check it out? Because this is what they have. Like, let's just say, for instance, um, you're in the United States and let's say, like, you're like Michael Norton, you're traveling down to uh, this place that grows these big old long... Um, horn-shaped flowers and they make this fabulous ayahuasca tea and you know nothing about this and he says here I want you to read this book this is translated from the native language this is going to tell you all about you know the medicinal properties and the shamans and how they believe this is a religious experience and about all the stupid Americans that are coming down getting this experience and they're getting possessed and some of them are dying down here so in that case, yes, you may want to pick up a book, but that is only under the direction, the guidance, and the experience of somebody that you are under their tutelage so that you are in a safe place. Other than that, you take a risk, a big risk. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's really not worth it. So invest time in God, kitties, and you'll smell the bad ones a mile away. Trust me. Yeah, if I only had a dime for all the people that have said stuff like, the church has been lying. I have the I have the deep understanding of the truth and the reality. They read Keys of Solomon. They think they discovered something no one else knows. Suddenly yes. now they're an expert. Uh, and it's like, you're, you're reading demonology from the perspective of demons. You're reading about how to appease them. It's like reading Demon Boy yes. magazine and reading about the you demon centerfold. You don't need it. You really don't need it. What he likes it. to eat and watch on TV and stuff. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? We did start break. a little bit late, and Ken wants to go, you know, just take a little quick break because we do have the show being tracked to network. other radio network so we've kind of got to try and stay on track kids so don't go anywhere please it's going to be a really quick break i promise just so that they can put a little commercial in this is the real deals joining you live don't go anywhere like and share if you dare and follow us click subscribe and we will be back in about one minute and a half all right yeah. i hope so all right It is. That was easy. <laughs> for but, uh, some, for I'm some. getting a bongo drum for the show, just warning you guys. Welcome back. We're the real deals, and we're here to serve it up on the real. And that's the deal. So sit back. We're about to complete our little journey into the pros and cons and the wasting of mistakes done by people that are on demonology teams and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So we're on what, number seven? Number, yes, yeah, I think for number six, pretty self-explanatory. Well mm -hmm. said, by the way. And number seven, lack of patience in normal progression, a pursuit of recognition. You know, this is again, this is again, 
people are really in a hurry to, uh, you know, if you had a band, it wouldn't work. Like, I want to be a rock star. Yes. And then you get down there, and you obviously you need, you know, to practice your songs with the band. Everybody needs to get together, get it done. And you're in the basement for three, six. Sometimes, you know, for the new bands and new uh, musicians, they could be down there for a year or two, Come which there. wears uh, really quick. Mm-hmm. And so people get impatient here. They yes. want to they, they, so they realize that all you got to do is join, uh, you know, the odor of exorcists and stuff. And suddenly you're an exorcist <laughs> investigator. Or spend and then, your and then $10 for around. a I, little certificate framed on your door. Yeah, $40 for you can become a bishop or a doctor through the Universal Life Church. People get antsy yes. and they get, you know, to get undue recognition. They do. And like I said, you would never get away without being a musician. Uh-uh. People would hear it. Well, in this case, you remember on the top here it says, remember the true goals. That yes. when you're faking this, the only person you're shortchanging, well, beside your team wasting time with a loser, is that you are... <laughs> I'm so mean tonight. Are you telling people they're losers? <laughs> is that, that's not uh, very nice. That you're shortchanging the people that you're trying to help. Because just thinking you. you can do it. I actually knew a guy who told me that he was a C++ programmer back in, um, in the 90s. And... Uh, yeah. After he met some girl online who was actually like the the niece of the uh, VP for Sony Interactive in Kansas City, yes, and she got him a job there, and he was only there for I don't I don't know how he lasted three weeks. He moved Crazy. down there and everything, and they realized he doesn't know Jack. That's so, awful. So, some people he was and they a guy that paid him. What's some guys wrong? told me that worked with him. Uh, that he was telling people he was an ex Navy SEALs, and people didn't believe that. We're getting that now. This kind of level of narcissism. But it's way overblown, and it uh, they think that people don't know. See, it takes one to know one. We can call it. You know, it's mm-hmm. easier when you would know the topics to call the BSers, you know, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Don't expect the truth. That's why we're called the real deals right there. <laughs> I can't top that. <laughs> you can't top that. I'm sorry. What would Super you like nice me one. to say? You want me to say, oh, yes, yes, yes. They're all... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not working. And you know why? I didn't put enough goo in there. It looks like it's just spitting. Well, you know why? Oh, there it is. There you go. Okay. All right. Go. Number eight. We need a soft back machine. That's right. That's what I said. Get me my bongo. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll find one. All right. Oh, your favorite. Yeah. Oh, the novice do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like that. Yeah, there. Read it. What does it say? The uh, the it novice slash student number begins eight, to do the lectures novice too soon. Begins to do lectures. Why is this one different? You're not on a team pretending that you're you know uh, this house is clear walking around here. I mean, I'm talking about anybody well, who projects you know, himself. Now you think, think you're a teacher. People right think the that gate. they can pick up a doll at Goodwill and all of a sudden, you know, I too can be a celebrity with my own bobblehead dolls in my basement and tell people about it and write a book and publish it myself. And I'm a, be- I'm a star. No. I can get on my Mark McGuire at bobblehead and I can, me and, me and Mark Mcguire. And having an ugly doll. I can I carry above and my And having head nightmares. And it's being a haunted doll. No. But how is it haunted to make it scary? Hmm. We don't want to know. Uh, it watches to. me when I walk around the room. It turns its stringy It follows me to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody well, well, in this house. to do a parody house. show. How to uh, fake being a paranormal uh, person. <laughs> you know, and, and we'll do dolls part one, houses part two, something like that. I don't know. I mean, this is, this is how we can uh, let off steam because... I don't take breaks. I don't say, hey, I'm taking my break. It's uh, it's the fall. I always get off my nut. I like Michael Huff's <coughs> idea. We'll just, we'll just I don't put those breaks, little certificates how I let it out. and little boxes of Cracker Jacks, and we'll put our, our face on the front of Cracker Jacks, and we'll give them little certificates. <laughs> Listen idea. to our show. You too <laughs> can be a, a, a Democratologist. <laughs> 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 That's bad. I'm sorry. That was, that was bad. Uh, Ken better take over now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, happy 5th, the day after the 4th That's of July. right. What do you get after you behave at a family party on the 4th? You go home and get your 5th. Ba-da-ba-ba.
Okay, oh, no, everybody was like, whatever, right, onward. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lack pair, of patience the in the progression of things. Mm, sign me up. Okay. Oh, wait, the novice student yeah. begins to do lectures. Okay, we did that one. Okay. All right, we're on number nine already. Wow. Okay. Approaching. Number nine. Approaching from a parapsychology angle. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. In two weeks we're having part right, of kids, Bob Bailey on. There we're is there is a load of people that are really smart. Okay? You and sure there's about that? loads of people. Well, you know, let me tell you this. There's book smart and there's street smart and there's just, you know, me, smart Alex. It's about five percent of the population. That's not loads, baby. <laughs> so we have people that really know how to read and know. I mean, they just, they totally know. <laughs> Denise know says, certificates it. for everyone in chat. Yes, Denise, bring them over. <laughs> we'll sign them up, I promise. <laughs> oh, certificates Denise. of completion. Yeah, certificates of completion. <laughs> no, survival. So, <laughs> get me off topic here. We have... We have the certificate. Right the here. Par whole parapsychology the phenomena. Thing. Yeah, I yeah, know. We we do have phony certificates for you. We're 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 just we're waiting to put them in the cracker jar box. No, we're we're going to put them on a little magnet and say you are certified or certifiable. That's not a depends. Okay, by the way. certifiable. I think we're going to charge a couple dollars more because if you're certifiable, that means you get to stay. <laughs> if you're just certified, you got to go. <laughs> Okay, over everybody's head, especially so his. Certified. Yes. So, the point about parapsychology is A, it is not a science, B, it is quackers. Uh, the whole field of psychology and psychiatry is not medicine. It is a poke em and take notes. It is not science. Read my lips. So it's called para. And, well, that's <laughs> even worse. That's even worse. I mean, you're taking psychology, the psychology. study of the psyche, and let's not even go into that root word because it'll take me too long, yeah. and I'll go into the Greek, and I'll get upset. So if you know that you're smart and you, like me, I can study a script, I can stand up on stage, and I can mimic it back. Does that make me smart? No. What it means is that I can remember stuff. Yeah, and like an actor. can I read a book and remember what's in it five minutes later? Probably. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that I'm an expert? No. Does that mean that I should be teaching what I just read? No. Mm. So uh, the fascination is there, and the fascination is very, very, shall we say, invitational to those of us who have to work. Like, you know, Ken and I have to work. <laughs> Really and not. it would be really, really cool. I would love, you know, to be a high wire circus juggler and wear those cute little costumes, a little feather coming out my tissue wishy, you know, and then, you know, go home and eat bonbons all night. But then I wouldn't be able to, like, balance on the high wire. So I can't do that. You but I read a book about it once. I don't even know what a bonbon is. <laughs> Parapsychology, kids. What a name. Para for... Paranormal? What does it mean, Ken? What psychology it does means, it mean? Means old, outdated, atheistic approach of uh, the phenomenon Other that we deal mind. with, if you want to call it the phenomenon. And we found it pretty much useless. The only thing it's useful for is like, oh, you have a geese, gas leak, a geese leak. You have a gas leak in your house. Yes. Oh, that might be causing hallucinations. Oh, yeah. You have well, like that's, this that's conduit, the problem. You know, if you, you are going to too. adhere <laughs> to the precepts of something that is not a science and it's a pseudoscience, you cannot expect to be respected by any pastors, any priest, when you bring this stuff up. Mm -hmm. So just don't waste your time on it, please, because you're going to be wasting priest time. You're going to waste, waste pastors' time. You're going to waste people that need help. And they not only need spiritual, but they probably need medical help as well. But since we're not medical doctors, we can't help them. Unless you are a medical doctor, and then I'm wrong. So, uh, stay away from the parapsychology kids, please. Please. It's fun. It's got gadgets. So do we. You know, oh yeah, we it. got gadgets. All right. Where's my That's little, where's my little radar gun? Uh, radar uh, we're gonna do a little talk this weekend if somewhere, but. Uh, there's a gadget. You can mm -hmm. do that. I got my gadgets. And there's always some nut and job I got my Star Wars the spirits too. go into the bubbles, and you can run them out of the house yes. with the bubble and make yes. it out the door. I'm queen of the bubbles here. I mean, it's, you can just make it make stuff yes. up better than mm -hmm. some of these people project the I miss Lawrence Welk. What they've learned. And one. <laughs> go ahead. Number 10. Parapsychology is uh, 
Uh, parapsychology yeah, is just, I yeah. think parapsychology is like the aphrodisiac of those who just don't want to go to school and don't want to obey mm-hmm. authority. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a parapsychologist. What does that mean? Mm, it means I chew a lot of bubble gum and I look important. How's that? Number yeah. 10. Too much focus on getting evidence that does not contribute <laughs> to solving the actual problem. It's kind of a continuance of nine because people use the, those kind of notions to get it. Yes. So, um,. On another on another list, where even I started writing a book and I got to finish it. I got 138 pages done, and that was like two and a half years ago. Got distracted, yes. we'll say. But in there, we went over the details of uh, what evidence is actually useful to the church, for example, which oh should be gosh. only useful to you know. You know we you need too. to do like a whole a whole hour about okay what okay. the church can accept we don't have time to go into that now trust me let's just skip on that one uh not want to skip it entirely yeah where we need to point it so, out because if yeah. you guys are going to contact we'll a an whole episcopal show. church a methodist church any church that's why i wrote the book on investigation you need to know how to approach these people professionally and it's going to yeah. be the same attitude that you have in a professional style environment, whether you're working for McDonald's, whether you're working for um, Sony, whether you're working for anyone, you have to have a professional Mm -hmm. attitude and you have to do the best and speak the best and be the best that you can because they're not going to take you serious if you don't. So number what, 10, too much focus on getting evidence. That's a really big one. That's that's like the number one reason most people want to be on a team, want to do deliverance. Oh yeah, I want evidence. There's there's life out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's life out there. You're staring at it. Yeah. Oh, it's well, sad. the evidence is that uh, uh, they put it on their websites, and uh, a long time yes. ago, I I knew a team even uh, that uh, figured out that was a bad idea because when they yes. played in their house. They had activity afterwards because if it is a mm-hmm. demonic voice, true, you've just gave it permission by manifesting through audio technology, whatever. It's very essence of its audio, and of course, that's what they heard too. That the disembodied voice, you gave it permission to yes. manifest its audio or voice or affect things that way. Like if you ask it to turn on and off a light, even a flashlight, a ghost hunter does that. This is another kind of thing in itself without going off. You gave it permission to turn lights on and off. Yes. In the old days, it was the Fox sisters with the Knox. That's why there was a lot of poltergeist rapping. Well, houses. it's when and you specifically are, ask now. for it. Because they asked it knock once. You're uh, like, oh, for yes, what's twice here for no. They gave it permission my dog and my knocking. husband? <laughs> it's my ridiculous. little birdie here. No, but you got to watch here. that. Don't let the uh, the trophy hunting uh, get in the way of uh, remembering the true goals on the very top if you're there for actually solving the problem. It might be fun for you to go there. Can you imagine, like, if someone had a tiger in the backyard? I'm sorry. I'm laughing. Father Mike is looking up the uh, Aquinas solution to the bottle and the lobotomy. <laughs> yeah, Father Mike, when you get it, please call it in. We'd love to hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't have the call in number. Oh, that's right. But, yeah, the lobotomy thing. If we ever had a need, we'll get it reconnected. Sadly, you know. Can you know? imagine if you had a, a tiger in your backyard and you called animal control yes. and, and the guy actually has to go and buy an outfit where the, you look like the guy who goes to the woods with that, you know, that safari guy. Oh, my. You know, with the shorts. A and pith helmet. The helmet the that weep. looks like. And so he's got to get all the garb on and everything, get all the stuff over there and get a lion tamer, out, uh, you know, whip and stuff like that. He said, do you ever think just shoot him with a tranquilizer? <laughs> Don't overcomplicate it with yes. this stuff. The getting evidence stuff is for you. It's not for the people. And do they need proof that the place is haunted? 99% of the time, the ones we run into, they're already convinced. Well, let's say 100%. They're convinced it's haunted already because <laughs> and now we're, we're the ones going to have to shoot them down let them down justly. No, it's not haunted. Don't write the book. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> that happens. Yeah, sometimes they really take oh it lightly, too. Gosh. Like the guy whose TV, it was a family. Mm-hmm. In Illinois, uh, in the early 2000, their TV would get warped. Some something entered their TV. You heard guitar amplifiers, the MFM radios, of course the old mm-hmm. shack hack, which is you know getting something to infiltrate a box. Oh my! Uh, electronic receiver. But it's amazing on that stuff. Um, how are we doing for time here, by the way? Good. I'm just. I'm still thinking about oh, lobotomies. Good. I mean, I know the Egyptians did them through the nose. Oh, you said Father so, Mike. We, yeah, Father Mike was talking oh, okay. lobotomies, and you're talking <laughs> this. It's like I feel like the nice person in the room tonight. <laughs> oh, we got. We got. We got to give uh, the justice to um, uh, with the topic of um, 
paranoid schizophrenia, disassociative and associative. We got to do a show on that because we yeah. did a roundtable show and we were just discussing it like a coffee table and it, some people didn't like it. And it wasn't lately. It was uh, last year. Oh, we'll we'll talk yeah. about this at another time. But yeah, yeah there we're are very very we'll real Father. mental we'll make Father illnesses, Mike sit in us on that and one. it's very very difficult mm -hmm. because um, these are not things that are possessions. People, these things are real, and people struggle with them every day. Yeah. So, mental illness aside, number ten, we took care of that. According, you know, to getting too much evidence. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay it, eleven. It doesn't contribute to solving anything. Mm -hmm. All right, mixed faith solution goes back to like one in five. Um, when you uh, what Ken's talking about here is that you can't have you know a rabbi feeding somebody matzo balls and a Hindu mm -hmm. you know doing you know the lotus and, and teaching them you know some shada huru um, kundalini kind of stuff and then <laughs> you know the the Buddhists you know doing the japa mala how about and the harry krishna <laughs> harry krishna and the catholic going big old with the holy water i'm sorry and that was disrespectful and the universalist going oh we lift you up jesus and then you've got you've got like you've got barnum and bailey's going on okay and mm -hmm. how the heck is god gonna like see through all that stuff yeah where is your faith going to be Where's the beef? Okay. Mixed faith solution. I'm, I'm not attacking yeah. Buddhists. I'm not attacking Muslims. I'm not attacking anybody. But I'm telling you, there's one God. Period. One. Okay. One. Not not a bunch of them. These people have religious practices, and we love them and respect them exactly <clears throat> where they are. But when you walk into deliverance, there's only one God. Not two or three or four or five. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's Ken's point. Be very, very careful. That was one of the first things that uh, yes. when I got a, what well, you can say, more of a public presence um, in yeah. the last uh, 20 years mm -hmm. that I came out and I complained that I, you know, and it's kind of what we we're saying earlier. I don't mean to be redundant in the list. Mm -hmm. That when you uh, you try to represent different faiths and stuff, this is a little different because you're using the same house, the same uh, case, a person, and you're trying different things like Benny did with the trying to get rid of the thing. But now it's a person. <laughs> now you're going to get the magic powder out, and then oh you're going to get gosh. the Catholic solutions out. Well, it's like Tony Cobianco is saying that's like the show he used to watch. I don't know what it's called. He says I think it's a Dead Files. He says they get this psychic. And then they get a priest, and they get a rabbi, and they get a witch, and yeah, that's how a good show starts, you know. Okay, <laughs> that's a good joke. I got a joke <laughs> for you. Okay, um, a guy on the corner had a fifty-dollar bill, and he gave it to da 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 da. -da. And what do you think they did with it? No, th no I agree. No, no, that's that's a, a bad rabbi, joke. a witch, a shaman yes, yes. walk into a uh -huh. bar. Precisely. You know, I mean, at least it's a bar. It's not a house. <laughs> it's pretty bad. No, and. and it does come to the thing if you go all the way back to the trying to have a person represent each faith the only thing that's good about that is that you know that you're going to allocate them to the right household now I don't really like saying, oh, I'll go find you a Wiccan priestess or something like that if it's, if it's no we kind. don't say that but what do we do <laughs> okay what do we do we always ask have you contacted your pastor your religious authority except okay? in that case Cause because it's time to evangelize. Well, of course it's time to evangelize. <laughs> yeah. Because once after they do, and they have checked with their, their rabbi or their shaman, mm -hmm. and they ask us for help, they have given us spiritual authority to evangelize their little fannies and bring them to some truth and go, okay, you want your house clean or you want to chase the little cockroaches for years to come? Yeah, when they give you permission. Pretty easy. That, 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 That's, That's legal right to bring field. Jesus in there and deal with mm -hmm. it, clean it out. And End of uh, story, Morning Glory. God will let the, uh, we'll just say, the non-Christians... Uh, Precisely. ...to witness the power mm -hmm. of uh, using a, a Jesus name, which is not just some Christian belief. Always. It works. Yes. Uh, we had people getting visited by greys, you know, grey aliens or whatever, and they had all the symptoms of sleep that paralysis was, was and horrible. a demonic visit, and everything was there, mm -hmm. even during the day. And uh, so when they got the uh, the solution of, you know, saying Jesus' name, oh, see yeah. how to react, they're like, why did that work? I don't believe Jesus and God, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like they have this New Age belief hairdresser, that kind of thing. 
And, and that, that's, so they that's get introduced the to Jesus that's, that's that way. Just, uh, it just, it's mind-blowing yes. when it happens. It, my, it, uh-huh. your that's mind why just we're goes, evangelists, wow. too, by default. Yeah, I didn't, didn't even know that. Yeah. Didn't even know that. Mixed faith solution, just like Tony was saying, though, that it creates... It's like, okay, kids, let's say you just want to make a basic French bechamel. All right, now, bechamel <laughs> is the root sauce for all things yummy, like mushroom soup. Um, mm. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I want to interrupt you. Uh, potato soup, any kind of cream sauce. A bechamel is just the main sauce. It's like, okay, in the South, what is it? It's a roux. A, a, a roux is what they do. You have this basic sauce. It works with everything. Okay. Now, if you throw tar into it and sand into it, and why don't we add some wood shavings to it? Yeah. You have something edible. No. <laughs> And that's what you have when you invite all these mixed face solutions. You had one road that was going to work. You had one open doorway that was going to open and grace was going to flow. But you had to put all these boulders and doors and everything else. And then you're blocked. Yeah. Grace doesn't flow. Sorry. And these are uh, these happen. are mixed face that involve other gods, not the one God that we... <laughs> You know what I mean? Because when people say Hindus, like, all religions lead to God, or all religions are equally eyes to God. No, it's not true. Look at Hinduism. Do you guys ever see Hinduism that, has that many movie gods. about the dark Hindu gods or whatever? It's a murder culture? Yes. You know, Kali and whatever like that? You know, mm-hmm. apart from the Indiana Jones uh, Temple of Doom. Basically, it's... Yeah, but um, mm-hmm. you got to watch that when you think even monotheism doesn't necessarily... Monotheism, that's what Satanists are. Oh, yeah. The yes. real Satanists, not the dabblers, or the ones that think you just like <clears> the... Uh, a We've got about seven more, five more minutes, honey. Let's let's tie this up okay. because the last one is really a good one. We really need to like kind of flush this one out a little bit. Oh, uh, this one's really irritating. Well, it's not irritating <laughs> so much as it's kind of confusing sometimes for people because, you know, let's just say you're a forty or thirty five year old and you're a builder, and you know you've been in a number of houses. You've seen all sorts of things. You've seen all sorts of anomalies with water damage, with uh, uh, let's see, time, with uh, winds, with you know shifting sands, with um, houses being built on. So you've seen a lot of things, and you've also seen a couple of genuine what you believe to be haunted houses that were never solved because you know it just wasn't that important. Nobody was ever that bothered. So yeah. you think that that automatically calls you. You know, when somebody says, hey, man, we're going we're gonna to go check out this person so they got a bad thing going on in their house. We're going to go check it out. And you automatically assume that, well, I've had this experience, so, you know, I bet I know enough. You know, I'm going to go ahead. You know what? I'll take the lead on this. Not necessarily so. Or let's say uh, another profession you could have. Maybe, I mean, we actually have a, a nurse that leads a great team here in Springfield, so I don't want to use nursing because nursing is a really difficult profession. They work so many hours, but it yeah, could at least be. you have a desire to help people. Precisely, and they are doing it. Yeah. So we don't want to knock professions. What we're basically saying is that there's a lot of professions that people do that they're already helping people in certain ways that doesn't necessarily mean that you ought to be on a deliverance team or an or a investigation team or you ought to be in the ministry at all you really you really really have to think about it and you really have to put it to your spiritual mentor yeah that that crosses uh into another aspect that mm-hmm. i'm glad you brought that up um the uh the primary problem also is that uh, people think that um uh that you uh if you were a cop or in particular that was the one that came to mind suddenly you are qualified to be a demonologist and I'm thinking the only thing you're really going to be good at is following yes. the paperwork. Now we have two full, well, four pages to yes. fill out if we're going to exactly. stage two mm-hmm. with the diocese. And we use the same yes. one for uh, Storage of St. Michael internationally mm-hmm. now because the second one is cycle value and that kind exactly. of stuff, cycle valuation. And uh, so it's hard to do paperwork. So you're good at filing paperwork. You might, if you're not a detective and you're just a cop, uh, that it's a different thing to be, you know. You quote Very Sherlock Holmes so. all through the your, the uh, the book that you primarily wrote, the uh, the the guide to haunted investigations. I forgot what it. What's it called again? I haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> it's called investigations. 
guide to haunted investigations. That's it. Because so, so and it's, it's 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 like it's because I want to reach everybody. I want you to realize that you have to have a faith life, but it's for everybody. It's not just for you know Catholics or Baptists or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's for everybody to take something and glean something. So you know you all get on the path. Mm-hmm. So that. That's a false assumption. And the other Very thing is, so. if you're a military guy, you would think, oh, yeah, he's going to be a great demonologist. He's got a false sense that his physical presence, like, yeah, I can, I can change an M16 out and clean it in 10 seconds. You know, but it doesn't I'll, matter. i got enough five tours of duty for crying out loud. You're going to have a false sense of confidence against the battles of evil, and you're going to get your butt kicked. But can I tell you that a military person, um, that if you and I go on a job, that where there is somebody that is experiencing potential visions of um, doom and disaster and potential things such as, you know, uh, possibly explosions on the property, that they're seeing flames and that sort of thing. And if we have somebody like somebody that I know, <laughs> like our sheriff, that is good with explosives and stuff, and we go on the property and we see trip wires and everything else, their experience is going to come in handy and they're going to say, hmm... You see Everybody that wire up that in once. that tree? Somebody <laughs> set that. If this guy is having visions oh, yeah, I might of have, things I, blowing up, going back to the early thing, that profession could help. Do I need a plumber on a team? <laughs> Do I need a plumber on a team in case, it, you know, I mean, even then, if the poltergeist you is breaking don't. pipes. But like what I'm in. saying is that, that you know, <laughs> you can call come on, them. You can, you can call them, okay? <laughs> it's like even hockey coach, the great Mike Keenan used to say, the plumber's plum and the painter's paint oh, when he's talking gosh. about... When the defenseman did her job and the Fords did her job, that's, that's right. when it's going well. But when you bring guys in there and they're trying to be more than what they that's are, you're tough. You can do great paperwork. Back. Maybe you Give have me detective my background. You didn't lack you my use, compliment. You can use the common sense on how you <laughs> investigate if you have a detective background as a cop. You have you might have a false sense of uh, you know uh, confidence yeah. in your ability to protect yourself because you're used to using your firearms, <laughs> all the physical world stuff. True. But other than that, it's um, I can't even think of how it'd be useful. Um, it's just one of those things. So you got you know a great demonologist, a great cop out there. That's why in my book it's, it says that having consultants that you <laughs> speak to do not have to be on the team, but it's nice to have them in your back pocket so you can say, hey, I got a question. You know, I got some plastic stuff. It's pretty gray looking, and it's kind of wadded up with some aluminum foil, yeah. and it's like about three and a half inches by seven inches and it looks like it's got a couple wires running out of the center of it and <laughs> it's attached to the wall about three inches Wait, get away <laughs> are you talking about when you used to repo cars and haven't run any of those and you haven't seen c4 <laughs> <laughs> It's a good thing you got me, baby. I don't. I don't deal with psychos <laughs> like uh, Colby said. You know, I don't uh, deal with it's a good thing you got me, honey. I keep you away from c4. <laughs> Oh my gosh, someone's got her. <laughs> oh my gosh. And on that note, kids, we just wanted to tell you that we appreciate you hanging out with us. Give us a like, please, and a share if you can. Subscribe to our channel, please. And thank you all for listening out there in Radio Land. Never forget the reason we're here. We got to remind you, battle's already been won. So, we the real deals. We're here to keep it real and remind you that, hey, let's fight another day together. We do it the right way. Take everybody home. Leave no man behind. Exactly. We don't know what the topic's going to be next week. No, we're just going to pull it like a rabbit out of the hat. We'll post it. Thank you all for joining us. (laughs) Bye, Denise. (laughs) Bye, Michael. Bye, Patricia. Bye, Rose. Bye, Emily. Bye, Father. Bye, Father. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. God bless everybody. See you later. God bless you all. Don't forget to write. Say your prayers, rabbits. (laughs) The Real Deals TV Show, copyright 2018. A Swords of St. Michael production. Any unauthorized duplication or rebroadcast or retransmission of this broadcast without the express written permission of the Swords of the Saint Network or that of Kenneth and Farrow's deal is strictly prohibited.
Hello, this is Brother Kenneth. You can help support our ministry by subscribing, liking, and especially viewing our videos on our website, which are designed for self-help and education to help yourself and help others. And it's all free. Make sure you check back every week because we'll have new content loaded every week, at least another episode of The Real Deals TV, and share with your friends. You can also click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button near the top right of the screen. It'll give you notifications as soon as we get new videos uploaded as we'll continue this huge library of education unlike anything else that you've seen on the web so far putting the real truth the real facts none of this mamby pamby stuff that has all of this new age stuff witchcraft keys of solomon none of that stuff is going to be here just pure unadulterated christian judeo solutions that work that's at youtube.com slash the real deals